coach entering your 12th year at Michigan, you're the winningest coach in program history. What are you most proud of what you've built so far with the Wolverines? Uh, it's hard to believe that it's been 12 years. My goodness, when you say it, um, the veteran coach now and not the rookie coach where, where has all the time gone? Um, you know, it's always about like trying to build a program and trying to build something that could be consistent year in and year out. And, um, you know, our ability to get to the NCAA tournament and our ability to advance in the tournament has been something that, you know, I've been really proud of. Um, but I think it's also about the people that leave and, um, you know, the power of the Block M and really what Michigan stands for and the brand of Michigan as well as the brand of the Big Ten. And just watching my, our players go on and be successful has been really special. You've also become one of like the top teams to have a chance to win the Big Ten crown year in and year out. What's it going to take to do that this season? Yeah, I think this year it's probably more difficult than it's ever been. And every year I sit in this seat, I pretty much say the same thing. But it's actually true. <laughs> but it's really true. Like every year in my time here, our league has gotten stronger and stronger from top to bottom. Um, we have just tremendous, tremendous coaches, Hall of Fame coaches, but incredible, incredible student athletes, incredible players. Obviously, um, you know, the player of the year candidate in the country, but she's, she's one of many, many talented kids in our league. So I think it's going to be a special year. Um, but I think next year I'll be sitting in this seat and saying the same thing because I think we're deeper and stronger than we've ever been before. Last year, we were sitting in the seat talking about Leah Brown and Emily Kaiser losing Nas Hillman. This year, you know, you do have those veterans gone now, the Leah Browns, the Emily Kaisers of the world. Who can we expect to step up this season for you guys? Yeah, I know. Every year we lose somebody and, and we're like, oh my gosh, how are we going to go on? Um, I'm sure a lot of teams feel that way. Uh, but Layla Filia has really stepped in the, into that role. She uh, had a tremendous year for us last year um, and had a great summer, played USA Basketball this summer, um, has really grown as a person, has really grown as a player, um, has a chance to be really special. She's a guard that can do it all, plays both ways, um, wants to play defense just as much as she wants to play offense, really worked hard in the offseason at becoming a better passer, uh, becoming a better playmaker. So so I expect her to have a tremendous season for us. But Cameron Williams is another young lady that's here with us today, and she um, is a senior for us. She she came to Michigan to learn from Nas, and now it's her chance um, to have the stage. And you know we need we need her to average a double double. We need her to have Nas like numbers. So you know we're gonna need her to have a special season. And. You know, we have Jordan Hobbs, who's another a player that, you know, came on the scene a little bit last year, who's had a really good summer that we're expecting great things from, as well as, um, you know, a couple players in the transfer portal, an area that we really haven't gone to yeah. before, um, but with the landscape of college athletics changing like it has. Um, Lauren Hansen, who's a fifth-year kid from Missouri, uh, will play the point for us this year, and she's a dynamic guard. Um, as well as a couple other transfers in, in Alyssa Brett and Taylor Williams. So we have some experience. It's just not experience inside our program. So it's going to see, um, it's going to be interesting to see how our chemistry goes and how we gel together. One opportunity you had to get chemistry going, you went on a foreign tour the summer to Italy. How helpful was that to kind of jumpstart that chemistry on the floor? Yeah, our international trip was incredible. Like like you said, <laughs> we just missed you in Italy, um, and we got to go to Croatia as well, which was just beautiful. But what a great opportunity for our student athletes to connect, mm -hmm. to get to know each other, to get to know each other as players on the court, but to get to know each other as people off the court. And with a new team, with a, with some inexperience returning, a great opportunity for us to get our feet wet and play a few games and kind of figure each other out. So I think that really jump-started our season for sure. You know, you've been at Michigan for 12 years now. You're at St. John's beforehand. You've been you know, coaching for a while now. How have you seen this sport evolve as we've gotten to present day? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I got a chance to speak a little bit about it on the podium before, but 
what a great time for women's basketball. What a great time for young girls um, to look up and see just these incredibly strong, powerful women that they can aspire to be. Um, the WNBA has had an unprecedented season. Um, I said yesterday, you know, we're sitting at the dinner table with my two daughters and my husband watching the game, um, having dinner and talking about it all night, and then wake up today and get on the plane with our players and talking about it again. I just think it's just a great time to be a female student athlete, to be a women's basketball player. And our league is on the cusp of doing some incredible, incredible things. Um, this this year is going to be unprecedented. I'm I'm sure of it. Um, but then in the future, with it with the new teams coming and just the expansion, um, I I just think it's a special time for the Big Ten. It's a special time for young girls. It's a special time to be a women's basketball player. Uh, it's also a special time for the league in regards to having a player like a Caitlin Clark who's come in and elevated, you know, every team, really, just the profile of the Big Ten. And what's it like to coach against somebody of her caliber? <laughs> Well, if you've watched any film on Caitlin Clark, it probably comes up against Michigan. It just seems, I'm sure she has great games against everyone, but she's had some pretty good games at our arena. Um, fortunately, we've won some of them. Um, we, we, weren't, yeah, we weren't on the losing end of all of them, um, but she's just, uh, she's a special player. Um, and, you know, I, I've been fortunate in my coaching career to coach some really, really, really great players, some really special play players. Mm -hmm. um, Nas Hillman obviously being one of them. Um, and they come, they, they don't come around every day. You know, I, I've coached some really great players, but players like Caitlin Clark don't come around every day. So it's just been tremendous for our league. Um, she's just really been an a incredible spokeswoman for our league, uh, incredible repre representative of our league. So I, I think it's great. Um, I think everyone, she's going to face everyone's best shot, but she has throughout her career. And it's been really nice to watch her evolve as a player from a freshman to where she is now and her growth as a player. And I just think that speaks volumes to, you know, her team, to her commitment to Iowa and, and their commitment to her. But it's it's just been great for the league. And then to bring it back to Ann Arbor, you I know have a really good relationship with Coach Juwan Howard on the men's side. What have you been able to learn from each other over the years of working together? Yeah, Coach Howard, I just would like to give him a shout out. Always want to give him a shout out <laughs> um, to, get, to get well soon, um, to get healthy soon. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that's what drew me to the University of Michigan. Obviously, I was at St. John's for 10 years. My mom's still crying 12 years later <laughs> that I took my grandbabies mm -hmm. from New York away from her. Um, but it was an opportunity to go to one of the greatest universities in the world. And that opportunity meant I was going to be surrounded by excellence. And that excellence is on the court, in the community, but the people I get to work with each and every single day, whether that's Hutch, whether that's Ronnie Bernstein, our tennis coach, whether that's Bev Plocky, our women's gymnastics coach, Coach Harbaugh, children went to school last year, spend a ton of time with him or especially Coach Howard, the people I get to work with every day that I share a building with. Um, I get to work with some of the greatest people in, the, in their field, um, but just the greatest humans. And Coach, Coach Howard and um, his family, his wife, his children, who got to be a part of our Michigan family the last four years, um, they're just special people. But I think that's something that the University of Michigan attracts. And that's what drew me there is the opportunity to be there, surrounded by those type of people every day. So Coach Howard's the best. I miss Juwan. We need him back in the building. Um, but he's just a, a special guy. With the changing landscape of college basketball, NIL coming in the transfer portal, what have you and Coach Howard bounced off each other back and forth? I think one of the greatest things about Jawan is that he's open um, to anything, to having any conversation, to sharing anything. I mean, one of the first days, one of his first days on the job, we were practicing, and I look up, and there he is sitting watching practice, and he has a pad and a, and a pencil, and after practice, he grabs me, and he's like, I, Coach, I like this drill. Like, what do you think about this? And then the next week, we have our first game, and he's front row, and he's got a towel, and Nas makes it and one, and he stands up, and he starts <laughs> swinging the towel. I mean, I would... I'm like, is this real? But, I, you know, I would thank him every day for that type of support. And he said, we're family. 
this is how we operate at the University of Michigan. We are Michigan family. So I think whether that was him and I navigating COVID yeah. because we were the only programs really on campus during that time, mm -hmm. we spent a lot of time together. Um, it, whether it's navigating NIL, whether it's navigating the transfer portal, admissions, whatever it is, I know that I can bounce stuff off of him and I know that he feels the same way about us. We run to each other's office all the time. That's why I miss having him in the building. <laughs> Um, but, but like I said, he's just a unique, special individual and i um, so happy that he's a part of our Michigan family. I think he wanted to steal Nas Hillman off your team and <laughs> get him on his roster. He there for definitely a <laughs> did. But when you have your men's coach, your head coach, and their entire program that's supportive of your program, it really makes for a, a special chemistry inside the building.